Today, we will talk about the different courses and headings used in aviation. But before starting, since this topic is a bit long, this video will be divided into two parts. In this first part we will see how directions are expressed on Earth, and we will see the definition of true course, magnetic variation, and magnetic course, along with some practical examples. While in the second part, we will look at the wind correction angle, true and magnetic heading, compass deviation, and compass heading. So let's get started. Since ancient times, the North Pole has been used as a reference point to determine direction on Earth. In this case, cardinal and quadrantal points were initially used to express the relative direction to a point. The main cardinal points are north, south, east and west, while the quadrantal points are northeast, southeast, southwest and northwest. This way, if we are for example at point A, and we want to express the direction to point B, we would say that it is to the northeast. Now, although this system is widely known and used, it is not accurate enough for air navigation. That's why a numerical direction system consisting of 360 degrees starting from north, known as the sexagesimal system was established. This is a system derived from the cardinal point system. However, the difference is that here, a particular direction can be expressed precisely using angles relative to north. In this order of ideas, north would be represented by 0 degrees, east by 90 degrees, south by 180 degrees, and west by 270 degrees. So now that we know how direction is expressed on Earth, let's look at the definition of course. The course is basically the planned or desired path to follow. This way, in a route consisting of several legs, there will be a specific course for each one. Now, this course can be expressed using the cardinal and quadrantal directions. For example, the course from A to B would be northeast, while the course from B to C would be east. However, as mentioned before, the course can also be expressed in degrees, according to the sexagesimal system. So in this case, the course from A to B would be 045 degrees, and the course from B to C would be 090 degrees. Now, as already mentioned, this course is measured in relation to the direction to the North Pole, which is also known as Geographic North Pole, or just True North, since it is the real North Pole of the Earth, where the meridians converge and through which the planet's axis of rotation passes. Therefore, the course measured in relation to this True North is known as True Course, and is often abbreviated as TC. It is defined as the angle between the true or geographic north and the course. And it is always measured in degrees clockwise from true north as we can see in this example. Here, if the angle is 75 degrees, then the true course is 075. And in this other case, if the measured angle is 264 degrees, then the true course is 264. Now, we might be wondering, how can we measure the true course between two points using a map or a navigation chart? Well, since all meridians converge at the geographic North Pole, this means that meridians always point to true north. This way, in a navigation chart, we can assume that the meridians are like arrows that point to true north. So if for example we want to determine the true course between A and B, a meridian can be used as reference to measure it. In practice, we can use a navigation plotter, or any other device capable of measuring angles to determine the true course, which in this particular case is 070 degrees. Now, the problem is that in a small aircraft we don't have any instrument that indicates the current heading in relation to true north. Instead, we have a magnetic compass. A magnetic compass is an instrument used to determine the direction in relation to magnetic north. Now, we may have heard that a compass always points north, but how does the compass know where north is? Well, the compass needle aligns with the Earth's magnetic field lines, because it is essentially a magnet that is free to rotate around a pivot point. To understand this better, let's look at the Earth's magnetic field. The movement of molten metals in the planet's core induces the creation of a magnetic field around the Earth. Which means that essentially, the Earth is a giant magnet. 
And like a magnet, the Earth has two magnetic poles as we can see. Now, this magnetic field has different purposes, for example, it protects the Earth from solar wind and excess cosmic radiation, and on the other hand, it allows the magnetic compasses to point north. Now, as we can see, the magnet inside the Earth seems to be inverted with respect to the geographic poles. So, to avoid confusion, it is assumed that the south pole of the magnet is actually the magnetic north pole of the Earth, and the north pole of the magnet would be the magnetic south pole of the Earth. This way the magnetic field lines leave the planet at the magnetic south pole and re-enter at the magnetic north pole. With this, the compass aligns itself with these magnetic field lines and therefore it is capable of pointing north. The magnetic north pole is therefore defined as the point through which the magnetic field lines re-enter the planet, and as already mentioned, it is the point to which all compasses point. Now, although they are relatively close, magnetic north does not coincide with true north, which means in other words that the geographic north pole and the magnetic north pole are located in different places. Here we can clearly see the difference in the position of both poles. Here, the geographic north is in the middle of the Arctic Ocean, while the magnetic north is closer to Canada and Greenland. However, something important to mention is that the magnetic north pole does not remain at a fixed point, but moves over the years. Here we can see how the magnetic north has been shifting since the 1900s from the northern part of Canada towards Siberia. Now, we saw earlier that the angle between true north and the course is called true course. But what happens if we measure the course with respect to magnetic north instead of true north? Well, then we obtain the magnetic course, which is abbreviated as MC, and is defined as the angle between magnetic north and the course. This magnetic course is measured in degrees clockwise from magnetic north as we can see in these examples. So basically we do the same as with the true course, the only thing is that we measure it with respect to magnetic north instead of true north. Now, how can we measure the difference between true north and magnetic north? Well, that difference is called magnetic variation, often abbreviated as MAGVAR, which is also known as magnetic declination. It is defined as the angle between the direction to the true north and the direction to the magnetic north, as we can see in this example. This magnetic variation can be east or west, depending of our position on Earth. Here we can see a more graphical example of what is magnetic variation. Here, from this perspective, the magnetic north is to the west of true north, which means that in this case we have a west variation. Having understood this, let's see why does the magnetic variation changes depending on our position on Earth. Here we are looking at the Earth from the North Pole. Therefore, right in the center we have the true north represented by this black point, while the magnetic north is represented with this red point. Now, suppose we are at this white cross, and we look at the poles. As we can see, although the poles are actually in different places, from this perspective both are in the same direction, so then we say that there is no magnetic variation in this case. However, if we move to this other position, we will see that now there is a difference between the directions to both poles. In this particular case, the magnetic north is to the west of true north, which means that there is a west variation. From this other perspective, we can see that there is still a west variation, but with a greater angle. From this other position again we have no variation. And from this other position there is now an east variation, since from this perspective the magnetic north is to the east of true north. In summary then, when the magnetic north is to the east of true north we have an east variation. When the true and magnetic north are in the same direction there is no variation. And when the magnetic north is to the west of true north we have a west variation. Let's now look at each case more in detail. When there is an east variation, this means that magnetic north is to the east of true north as we can see in this example. In this case, having an east variation, the magnetic course will be smaller than the true course. Let's see why. Here we can see a situation where we have an east variation of 5 degrees. 
Now, let's say that using a plotter we measure a true course of 70 degrees. This way, if we measure the angle between the magnetic north and the course, it will be 5 degrees smaller, in this case 65 degrees. So as a rule of thumb, when the variation is to the east we must subtract, since magnetic course will be equal to true course minus the variation. Now, when there is a west variation, it means that the magnetic north is to the west of true north as we can see in this example. In this case, having a west magnetic variation, the magnetic course will be greater than the true course. Let's see why. Here we have a situation where we have a west variation of 5 degrees. In this case, let's say that the measured true course is 70 degrees. This way, if we measure the angle between the magnetic north and the course, it will be 5 degrees greater, in this case 75 degrees. So as a rule of thumb, when the variation is to the west, we must add, since the magnetic course will be equal to the true course plus the variation. On the other hand, when there is zero variation, it means that both the magnetic and true north are in the same direction. So in this case, the true course and the magnetic course will be equal as we can see in this example. In summary then, the magnetic course is the angle between magnetic north and the course. The true course is the angle between the true or geographic north and the course. And the magnetic variation is the angle between the true or geographic north and magnetic north. This way, magnetic course will be equal to the true course plus or minus the variation, depending on whether it is east or west. To remember this more easily, we can use the phrase, east is least and west is best. Now, previously we have seen how to measure the true course in a navigation chart using the meridians as reference. The question now is, how can we measure or determine the magnetic variation in a specific position on Earth? Well, for this, a complete model of the Earth's magnetic field has been created, with which it is possible to determine the magnetic variation at any point on the Earth. In this model, each line represents a specific magnetic variation angle. These lines are known as isogonic lines, since iso means equal and gonic means angle. Therefore, these are lines that join points of equal magnetic variation. Now, to use them properly in practice, the isogonic line closest to our position is used as reference. Let's see an example. Here we have an island through which different isogonic lines pass, which means that the magnetic variation will be different depending on which part of the island we are in. For example, if we are at this white cross, we would assume a magnetic variation of 5 degrees east, since it is the closest isogonic line to our position. Now, if for example we are in this other position, we would assume a variation of 0 degrees. In this other position the variation would be 2 degrees west, and in this other one it would be 5 degrees west. Now, something important to mention is that the line that joins points of zero variation is called a gonic line, since that word means no angle. Now, these isogonic lines will be depicted on the VFR navigation chart like this, and therefore the pilot can use them as reference to determine the magnetic course during the flight planning. Let's see a practical example of all we have seen so far. Here we have a navigation chart, and let's say we want to determine the true and magnetic course from A to B and from B to C. Here, the first step is to measure the true course using the meridians as reference. So let's say that using a plotter, we measure an angle of 31 degrees from A to B, and 97 degrees from B to C. Those will be then the true courses. Now, to determine the magnetic course, we must first look at the isogonic lines closest to the root. According to this, from A to B we would assume a magnetic variation of 9 degrees west, and from B to C we would assume a variation of 8 degrees west. Now, as we know, east is least and west is best, so if there is a west variation we have to add, thus obtaining a magnetic course of 40 degrees from A to B, and 105 degrees from B to C. With this, we have already seen the definitions of true course and magnetic course. In the next video we will continue with more concepts related to headings and courses used in navigation.
I hope the information presented in this video was useful. If so, don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching.